eye on for a lot of good information, the National Center for Public Policy Research. He's the president of that. David uh, Rodenauer is with us, and uh, we're going to talk about the IRS and the uh, DOJ and what's going on as far as uh, Tea Party targeting and whether there was a, quote, smidgen of corruption or not involved in that case. David Rodenauer joining us here in the Ringside Program. Hi, David. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jeff. Great to be with you. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, were you blown away when you watched uh, the president talk to uh, Bill O'Reilly about uh, this IRS uh, activity that, quote, didn't involve a smidgen of corruption? Uh, yeah, especially since there is theoretically an ongoing investigation of the Department of Justice. Look, th- this is wrong in so many different ways. For one, it sends a message out there that, you know, the fix is in. They already have the conclusion of this, having not done the investigation. Uh, But this is going to be the result. Now, let's step back here a moment and consider why people doubt that this would be a thorough investigation to begin with. Number one, uh, one of the people leading the investigation at the Department of Justice is somebody by the name of Barbara Bosserman. And who is she? She's a Department of Justice official that also just happens to be a contributor to Obama's presidential campaign <laughs> and having served as a volunteer. What an impartial um, investigator. Yeah, yeah, very, very. In all the Department of Justice, the hundreds of thousands of employees that they have, they couldn't find somebody who was a little bit more middle of the road here. Wow. Um, so obviously she has a vested interest in this administration. So, number two, you get leaks out of the Department of Justice that go over into the media in which they say they don't anticipate any criminal prosecutions because they've concluded that this is, you know, all a big mix-up. The IRS officials don't really know what's going on. Uh, They don't really know how to apply the rules and regulations. And as the president said, there were just a lot of boneheaded moves, you know, but ne- nothing, nothing, uh, n- no smidgen of corruption there. I mean, this is a real problem because if you go back last week, there was a h- hearing of the Senate Judiciary Committee in which Lindsey Graham specifically asked how many of the victims of the IRS abuse had been interviewed. And Eric Holder said, what did he say? He said, I don't want to get into it. Mm-hmm. Lindsey Graham said, has there even been one victim that's been interviewed? He said, I don't want to get into it. Why? Because none of them has, have been interviewed. How can you possibly have an investigation this far along, this many months, and not a single victim has been interviewed? And, and at this point, let me just add, we're one of the victims. Oh, really? It was an audit in 2012. Nobody has contacted my organization. Nobody. Mm. And and, and there all the others. There are countless others too that have been, uh, you know, receiving that kind of notice from the IRS. So, when you hear about an investigation, you have to sort of question, you know, the integrity of it, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. And there's another problem here as well. Uh, the problem is, is that theoretically there is a DOJ investigation of political abuse at the IRS, an investigation that could lead right to the White House. And the president just commented on it. Now, there's a reason why people under investigation avoid talking to the press. It's because their words could be interpreted as an attempt to coordinate stories. You know, basically obstruction of justice. The president just laid out a story that the rules regulating 501c3s is, you know, all too confusing for IRS officials. So having seen this broadcast on O'Reilly and seen the subsequent press, attention to it. If you're an IRS official, when somebody comes in and says, why did you do this? Gee, what are you going to answer to any investigator? Uh, It was too confusing. Too complex, yeah. (laughs) Too complex, too confusing. Now, of course, keep in mind, it wasn't too complex and too confusing in the previous administrations. Just this one. Now, and, and haven't they all also tried to say it was just some underlings running amok in, in Cincinnati in this one field office? Yes, they have. But, you know, we've got uh, Lois Lerner, who has taken the fifth, uh, you know, against self-incrimination. Uh, so if there wasn't anything incriminating, why did she take the fifth? 
So if she's and taking she, the fifth... Know, she, she's a top IRS official. How are we going to get to the bottom of it here if uh, people involved are taking the fifth? Well, I, I think several things. One is I really think that people ought to demand a special prosecutor. Now, even Richard Nixon allowed a special prosecutor. Seems like uh, this president's uh, not going to make that would, mistake. <laughs> well, you know, n- nobody would have trusted uh, John Mitchell. Right. You know, to come out with, you know, uh, it, it, then Attorney General John Mitchell to come out with a, a good investigation. They needed an independent party. Even Richard Nixon agreed to that. Uh, but this administration is held up to a lower standard than Richard Nixon. I think we can do a little bit better. I, I, I think that. you make a so, you make a very good point. Do have we had any special prosecutors in this uh, administration? I don't think so. Have we? Not 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 that I am aware of. Um, but it certainly called for in this case. And in addition to that, you know, we've got to take a look at how to prevent this kind of thing from happening in the future. Now we had this occur with the IRS under Richard Nixon. He sicked the IRS on. Uh, on people as well. We had this occur during the Clinton administration. Remember when we were all fighting Obama, uh, Obamacare, excuse me. <laughs> Hillary Clare. Freudian slip there. Hillary Care back then. Um, a lot of the organizations, including my own, were audited during the Clinton administration. Why? Because they wanted to intimidate us and sideline us and uh, keep us busy with dealing with the audit instead of fighting Hillary Care. Um, and now we have it happen again. Now, the only way that you're going to make this stop is if you make it make the people who are responsible pay for launching these in, in the future and also create uh, some degree of transparency so we can find out exactly what triggered audits, exactly who authorized it, and then there ought to be penalties imposed on the IRS for going after people and not using any semblance of rules in order to to launch those investigations. Uh, very good point. Uh, David Rodenauer is with us, uh, president of the National Center for Public Policy Research, uh, talking about the uh, DOJ's investigation of the IRS. Uh, now, we do know, uh, David, the DOJ has been all over Bridgegate up in New Jersey. We've got all kinds of investigators on that case, uh, and they seem to be pretty public <laughs> about what they're doing, but their investigation into the IRS seems to be uh, some kind of secret mission. Well, yeah, uh, obviously Bridgegate is much more important than going after <laughs> your your political opponents with the IRS, the most scary federal agency that exists. And the IRS uh, is supposed is supposed to be nonpartisan, uh, supposed to be uh, above politics. You're not supposed to be using it as a weapon to silence critics. No, they're not supposed to be. And um, from what I have gathered from some of the agents that are forced to do these audits, they're not very happy about it. Because, I mean, consider for a moment, if you go into this career line, most of these guys who are doing the audits mm-hmm. are just typical CPAs. They're number crunchers. Right. You know, they, they, they don't have a, a dog in this game. Um, and, in fact, the, the auditor that came into our office specifically said, I don't know what they expect me to find. There's nothing here. They, they just gave him marching orders, huh? They gave him marching orders, and he can't say no. He just has to do it. He thought it was stupid. And, um, you know, I'm sure that that's the case with a lot of the IRS agents out there right. that are forced to do this, that are pawns in a political game, and they don't like it. Because some of the higher-ups are political appointees, right? Does the president get yeah. to choose the, the, the head of the IRS um, during his administration? Well, I, I, I don't know all the positions that are political uh, politically appointed, but there are a lot of them, and political appointees were involved in, in, in some of these um, decisions. But uh, what's very revealing in the hearing that was yesterday, I believe Dave Camp of the House uh, Oversight Committee, um, had a hearing on the IRS abuses, and I can't remember the exact term that was used, but there was communication in which it was clear that they had set out a plan to go after uh, 501c4s, and they specifically said, they used language like, we're going to go off plan here. In other words, y- you know, they were going to do something that really wasn't part of IRS rules and regulations right. to go and try to regulate 
free speech, because that's really what this comes down to. This is an attempt to silence critics. Our talk line, five oh, it's about. 504-556-9696-888-429-1330. Brought to you by our friends at Star Spray Foam, your insulation experts. David Ridenauer with us of the National Center for Public Policy Research. Uh, let's take some calls here, David. Let's go to our friend Tony in Metairie. What's going on, Tony? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jeff. You know, it's really interesting listening to your guests here talk and take all of that into account to probably everything that's been said in the last hour and you talk about all of the things that's going on from Chris Holton and everything, and your man just made the perfect point. The object here is to silence. And what we have is everything, when you have the things that's talked about with Snowden, when you talk about what's going on with the IRS, when you talk about the people who we're not getting information from, I've told you this before and I keep telling you, I'm getting better information about what's going on in America from Al Jazeera News. Wow. This is absurd that I can turn on my TV, go to international television, I can watch the news going on. Your guest said a minute ago, uh, uh, I think it was Paul, talked about watching the interview with Snowden. I've seen all of that, and, and I'm sorry, Chris Holton claimed that he's not an expert on Snowden, but I'm going to tell you, he needs to get some medical marijuana and wake up. Because what's going on is the idea of the whistleblower and people in the government, what's going on is exactly what your man said. Since Obama's been in office, I think it was released that 62 Americans came forward as whistleblowers. And 62 Americans have silenced. About eight of them have been massively crucified by departments and agencies. Wow. Nobody has ever come forward and said anything. All this baloney Obama gives, he said in October of 2013 on Jay Leno, we really don't know what Snowden has done. We really don't know. We want to get him back here. What is getting back here? We're getting back here, and we're going to crucify him. And this is what's going on. When Americans try to speak out, when Americans try to disclose, when Americans try to expose what our government's doing, the NSA, CIA, and whatever, we now almost have, since 911, mm -hmm. a history of our government attacking us. All right. Hang on, Tony. Let me get uh, David's response. Uh, David, your thoughts? Well, a a absolutely. There, there are a lot of concerns about what this administration is doing. The IRS is just one of them. I mean, we've also got it, we don't have the the answers to Benghazi yet. You know, um, do we have the answers to Fast and Furious? Do we have those answers? Fast and Furious. <laughs> uh, we don't have the answers to that. You know, it, yeah. it's funny. In the president's interview with O'Reilly, he said, "Well, there have been all these congressional investigations, and they found nothing." Well, why have they found nothing? Because his Justice Department won't provide the documentation that they request. Right. And people you know, take if, the if fifth. And people take the fifth. The so that, They can't find anything. Yeah. They're, they're not even providing any information when they take the fifth. Uh, Tony, uh, your final comments, sir? Your thoughts? It's this, Jeff, that our national um, uh, news services in America and our media, they're sleeping in bed or they're either so scared to death of the fear of what our government now is doing to repress us, to terrorize us, harass us, intimidate us, to uh, compel us and force us to be silent, not disclose what we know, and that the term whistleblower now to the Obama administration is almost someone, I really think we're dealing with a mafia style form of government now. I'm really sad about this. Really yeah, sad. well, I'm sad about it, too. Tony from Metairie, uh, thank you, my friend. Uh, David, hang on. We want to take some more of your calls at 504-556-9696-888-429-1330. It's Jeff at WGSO.com, brought to you by our friends at Star Spray Foam. Check them out at starsprayfoam.com for more information. Your installation experts. All right, talking about uh, these scandals, these investigations, the lack thereof. Where's the media? Huh, where are the Republicans? Where's justice? Where's truth? Jeff Cruer here. David Ridenauer with us. Uh, we're going to take a brief time out to take care of some business. We'll be right back. Hey, New Orleans, this is Tim McNally, and we are back every Friday at 5 o'clock right here on WGSO 990 AM for The Wine Show. If there's one thing we know here in Louisiana, it's football. Whether it's a Tiger Saturday or a Saint Sunday, it's all time well spent with family and friends. And nothing says family and tradition more than Acme Oyster House. 
For over 100 years, Acme Oyster House has been welcoming guests to come on in, sit back, and stay for a while. So if you're planning a homecoming or just planning on coming home, Acme Oyster House, still grilling and chilling for over 100 years. You face many questions and uncertainties in life. This is Ralph Leopold. Join me for Your Money, Your Life. Tuesdays at 5 on WGSO 990 AM. And we can talk about it. Hi, I'm Proud Lord Ninth Ward native and former NBA player Eldridge Kasner. Inviting you to join me for All-Star Weekend. The NBA Retired Players Association is offering a single pass to all its All-Star events February 14th through 17th. For a $1,000 tax-deductible donation that supports the NAR Foundation, two fans receive a full weekend of inside access to the greatest players in basketball history. Call 312-913-9400 or visit legendsofbasketball.com to reserve your spot with the legends. This is David Laville with the New Orleans Ghost Hunters. Join me and my brother, Mark, for Paranormal Talk here on WGSO 990 AM and WGSO.com. Friday nights at 7. You need AC help right now? Call River City Air Express right now, and they'll come to you right now. River City Air Express, East Bank, West Bank, North Shore. River City Air Express is there. Call 841-3300. 990 AM. Young's Dry Cleaning is the metro area's premier dry cleaner. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery, too. To get on the free pickup and delivery list, call Young's at 288-8381 or go online. Young's Dry Cleaning. Not only is he speaking easy, he's easy to speak to, and he won't cut you off. Ringside Politics with a Punch is on the air now. Give Jeff Cruer a call at 556 Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we're back with our special guest. Uh, it's ringside right here on WGSO. And, uh, David, you ready to take some more calls? Absolutely. Let's go to Michael on a cell phone. Hey, Michael, good morning. Hey, good, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, let me explain something to your audience that you have not. Uh, to, to obtain 503C status as a taxable organization, a tax-exempt organization, you have to comply with certain IRS regulations and they need to check it. Now, these groups that are so overtly political, like these Tea Party groups, are obviously going to be the center of investigations. And just because they investigate, they let a lot of them off, and and, and they uh, did find a lot of them were overtly political. And they did the same thing to some liberal organizations, but they weren't so overtly political as the, as the uh, Tea Party guys. And plus, the Tea Party guys who are normally brainless, they didn't even know how to fill out the, the thing. So the fact that they were audited alone does not mean anything. Also, you would have us believe that OSHA... The IRS and all the federal, the FBI and all the other federal agencies are targeting you. You are believe you're a chicken little syndrome. You're paranoid, and you have an Obama obsessive complex. All right, so, uh, ha- ha- you need to join the real world. Hang on, Michael. Let's get David's response. David. Uh, I'll be happy to respond. Um, the caller is quite confused, number one, because there have been two types of groups that have been targeted. One are 501c4s. That's typically the Tea Party groups, and they are allowed to engage in political activities. They have also targeted 501c3 organizations, such as mine, that are limited in the amount of political activities that they can engage in. But... Um, it just from our personal experience, what uh, the IRS agent came in with was one of our fundraising letters. The IRS agent said he saw nothing wrong with the fundraising letter, and yet that was grounds for going into a fishing expedition into our organization. Now, if there's nothing wrong with the fundraising letter, why did the fundraising letter prompt an audit of our organization? This is the third audit that we have had under two Democratic administrations. The third audit. All right, quick follow-up. is political abuse of power. All right. And I would also say to the t- caller, yes. numbers don't lie. There were three, close to 300 organizations 
uh, that have had their uh, their papers slow walked or they've been audited. That's an awful lot. All right, you got about ten seconds. A quick follow up, Michael. All right, we lost him. Uh, David, can you hang with us a few more minutes? Sure. All right, because we want to continue this. Uh, David Rodenauer with us of the National Center for Public Policy Research, talking about this uh, investigation that uh, may or may not be going on uh, into the uh, IRS uh, targeting scandal. What do you make of what the uh, DOJ is doing? Uh, is there a real scandal here? Uh, Michael doesn't seem to think so. Our guest certainly does. How about you? We'll be back. WGSO, 990 AM, New Orleans, Louisiana, 60 years of speaking easy, New Orleans style. NBC News Radio, I'm Dirk Van. January's jobs report, weaker than expected, but enough to nudge the unemployment rate down a tenth of a point. CNBC's Hampton Pearson at the Labor Department. Mm. Up 113,000 January non-farm payrolls, increasing by 113,000 jobs. 6.6% is the unemployment rate. 113,000 new jobs, far fewer than last year's average monthly gain of 194,000 jobs. Wall Street's mixed on the news. He won't be there to root them on in person, but President Obama is sending a video greeting to U.S. athletes at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. We couldn't be prouder of you, and we can't wait to see what you accomplish in the next few weeks. But we're also proud of everything you've done to get this far. Opening ceremonies from Sochi tonight on NBC. And America's gas pains are about to get worse. AAA says warmer weather means greater demand and pricier gas expected to peak this year between 355 and 375 a gallon. This is NBC News Radio. Valentine's Day is next week, and Pro Flowers is offering an amazing deal. One dozen red roses plus a free glass vase for just $29.99. Go to proflowers.com, click on the blue radio microphone in the upper right corner, and enter the secret code 0200. But hurry, this incredible deal expires. This Friday, the price of roses will skyrocket next week. Order now from Pro Flowers to get huge savings. Plus, pick the delivery date and it's guaranteed. One dozen stunning red roses sent fresh from the fields, guaranteed to stay fresh and beautiful for at least seven full days for only $29.99. And will include a free vase with every order. Remember, the price of roses can double, even triple next week. And this incredible deal expires this Friday. The price of red roses will not be this low for long, so don't wait. The only way to to get this amazing deal is to visit proflowers.com click on the blue microphone in the upper right corner and enter the secret code 0200 that's proflowers.com secret code 0200 suburban roofing and siding 504861 roof locally owned and operated fully licensed and insured has been re-roofing south louisiana for over a decade suburban roofing is one of only six percent of roofing contractors nationwide certified by shingle manufacturers which allows our customers to qualify for the manufacturer's extended warranty program my good friend Marty Skonkins is honest and reliable and stands behind all the Suburban Roofing's quality workmanship. Suburban Roofing skilled crews are experts in all types of roofs. Don't sign that contract till you call Suburban Roofing and Siding at 504-861-ROOF. New Orleanians that know get their throws from TJ Carnival Supplies. Hi, it's Corey Johnson, and it's Mardi Gras season again. Tommy Marshall at TJ Carnival Supplies has been providing Mardi Gras throws to New Orleanians longer than anyone. TJ Carnival Supply has all your favorite sports throws. Saints, LSU, Tulane, Pelicans, even UNO, Southern, ULL, and the Zephyrs. TJ Carnival Supplies, 28 Fairfield in Gretna, or online at tjcarnival.com. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Just watch out for those PETA people. You're listening to Ringside Politics with a Punch. Give Jeff Cruer a call now at 556-9696. President of the National Center for Public Policy Research, uh, David Rodenauer is with us. Uh, Jeff Cruer here. It is Ringside to be a GSO. David's... Uh, of course, uh, shedding a light on some important issues. We appreciate him uh, staying with us for another uh, segment. A little bit later on, we're going to be talking to Beth Salcedo. She's with the Louisiana Coalition Against Human Trafficking. Uh, she'll be joining us a little bit later on uh, in uh, this uh, part of the program. But, uh, David, welcome back, sir. And uh, you ready to take some more calls? Sure. Let's go to Brian in Metairie who's with us. Hey, Brian, good morning. Good morning. David, thank you so much for all that you do. I have a question on the 501c4. There's a whole new list 
of things that the government is trying to add that you will no longer be able to do uh, if you if you if you have that 501c4. Could you read that? It's, a, it's what what you're not allowed to participate in, whether it's talking bad against the government. I can't remember everything it was, but it was about five or six different items. Well, um, I, I haven't reviewed uh, thoroughly the 501c4 regulations that they're, they're thinking of coming out with, but what I do understand is that they are revising 501c4 regulations to make all the things that they just did legal. <laughs> so basically it's like uh, post-dating a check, uh, and they're, they're covering themselves by changing the rules. Well, you know, that's not how we deal with things in a democratic society, uh, number one. Uh, number two, and I, we've talked a little bit about where is the media in all this, and that's a good question. But I have another question, which is, where are these human rights organizations, Amnesty International, America's Watch, where is the civil rights organizations like American Civil Liberties Union? They're mom. Nobody's talking about this at all, and this is suppression of free speech. Yes, this is Can I ask one more question? Real fast? Yes. Political right? Hang on. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of that whole case about Bill Clinton. You know, this is a guy who was a predator, sexual harasser, uh, abuser of women. Uh, where were the women's rights organizations uh, speaking out against his behavior? I mean, these organizations are very selective, David, in who they uh, want to uh, complain about. Uh, usually it's just conservatives. Uh, right. It's all about ideology. It's not about actual beliefs in standards and civil liberties, it seems. Exactly. All right, uh, Brian, one more time. quickly, go ahead. Okay. In California, for uh, 501, C3, and 4, they're getting ready to pass a law now. Uh, whoever has the, the, those two, the 501, C3, and, and 4, that uh, they can no longer discriminate against the, the LGBT uh, transsexuals. Doesn't that take away from the freedom of, of, the, of you having a, a, a uh, tax-exempt status to have your own organization? You're being forced to, to be able, you, you're being forced now in Cal or getting ready to be forced in California uh, to go against your core beliefs. Like, and this is going to be uh, most of your Christian organizations with these tax exempts. I was just wondering right, if well, you I comment further on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Brian. I, I, I'm not really familiar with that uh, California initiative. Um, it, it may just deal with, in order to get a nonprofit status in California recognized by California, that is the case. But California doesn't have, in theory at least, any influence over granting a 501c3 and 501c4 applications because that is federal. That's with the IRS. Wow. All right. Hey, uh, Brian, thanks, of course, as always. Uh, David, let's get back to the phone calls, 504-556-9696 to join us. And Paul from Destrahan checking in. All right, Mr. Paul, good morning. Hey, Jeff. Morning to you and your guests. Yes, sir. I just want to talk a little bit about, maybe I don't know if I'm on the line with this, about the Internal Medicine and Revenue Service with Obamacare. Okay. Are you, is it out of line? Can I say what I have to, just one comment? Yeah, go ahead. Make your point. Okay, what bothers me with this uh, taking over 6% of uh, medical services, 6% of, uh, um, of the economy, uh, you know what, it's not just about Obamacare. When you look at the bronze plan, it's $298 a month, $6,000 deductible, and only half of the operations paid for. And there's a lot of money in there that is, it's involved, and I'm thinking that they're going to use this money for entitlements and for socialist programs. And that's what's, uh, it just came to me this morning with the, you know, worst case scenario, and this would be it, that they would take the money from, from, from Obamacare, because they're not doing their job with helping people. They just want the little simple cases. They don't want the complicated cases. And what bothers me big time is I think they're going to use it for entitlement, social programs, and that way they don't have to, uh, steal and jab from the uh, from the uh, American people. So I want to ask him what his thoughts of uh, that is, and I'm going to hang up and listen. All right, my friend. Thank you, Paul. Uh, David, uh, care to make any comments on that issue? Uh, well, well, I would simply say that uh, Obamacare, by its very nature, was designed to redistribute wealth. I mean, that, that that's really 
what it's all about. It is about having some people pay for medical services and being forced to buy insurance who may or may not want to in order to subsidize other people. Um, so, I mean, there is a redistribution effect in there. So, uh, in terms of their larger agenda, obviously. And, and their real goal, by the way, was for Obamacare to gradually push us towards what they have in Canada, which is a single-payer system uh, run completely by the federal government. Uh, because the the goal of Obamacare actually, at least in my view, was to destroy the private market for insurance and uh, force the government to step in and take over. So, you know, the disaster that you're seeing right now is in part uh, on purpose. Um, you know, Obamacare, however, is unraveling far faster than I think they ever ended. Yeah, and uh, one correction I would make to what Paul had to say is that it's an even bigger slice of the economy. Uh, healthcare, I think, covers about 16 to 18% of the economy, so that's a takeover of uh, over one-sixth uh, of the economy. And secondly, well, and it's, it, yeah. It's already taken over. The, the federal government, in one way or another, already controlled about 60% of the market because you got Medicare, you got Medicaid, you got S-CHIP, you have uh, the VA, all these other government programs already constitute about 60% of the healthcare market. They want to take over the remaining 40%. The reality is the reason why our health care system isn't working right now is because there's so much government health care. There's a lot of cost shifting that goes from government over to the private sector because government wants to hide the true cost of it, and they're doing it on the rest of our back. And to correct this problem, they're going to give us more government intrusion uh, into uh, yeah, only healthcare. Only in Washington, only yeah. in Washington would uh, you know something that isn't working because the government is involved. Would that be a rationale for even more government? <laughs> right. But I did hear this morning that uh, they're considering the administration possibly allowing people with individual plans that they pay for to keep them for up to three years now. Um, before being uh, forced uh, into the exchanges. And uh, the implication is that uh, they're doing that for political reasons because they're worried about the uh, midterm elections uh, this fall. So, well, well, not only that, but they're worried about the presidential election in 2016. If you extend it uh, by three years, it gets by two election cycles, not just one. Yeah, good point. Uh, very good point. All right, let's squeeze in one more for you, David. We appreciate your time this morning. Our friend uh, Adam in Pearl River checking in. All right, Mr. Adam, good morning. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff, I wanted to quickly make the connection about our previous conversation and what David is revealing to us right now. The security classification system of the federal government used to be used to protect our military secrets, in fact, our very deepest military secrets. It is now being used to classify information that this government does not want in the hands of the American public. And that is information that would be not embarrassing to the United States, but would be embarrassing to this government. It, it, it is, in effect, an attempt to shut up any kind of information that mm -hmm. may be uh, embarrassing to them. To the people. Now, what David is talking about is the same thing. It's an attempt to shut up the Tea Party, quiet their voices, so that what they have to say, not only can be disagreed with, can never be heard. Right. So we've, we've got two forces operating here in the same direction to keep the American public fooled and uninformed. And to prevent opposition from really uh, building strength and building support. Of course. Because, you know, if you tie these groups up and, and legal challenges and uh, dealing with the IRS, and, then they can't go out there and, and get involved in politics, can they? I mean, they're, they're distracted. They're financially um, really put uh, at, at a major strain. And, um, we are, you know, it, it certainly helps we, at liberals. We are, right yeah, on exactly. the edge of, we are right on the edge of tyranny. It's just around the corner, and we're seeing it uh, closer and closer right now. All right, my friend. Thank you, Adam. Uh, David, your thoughts? Well, um, a absolutely. Um, they are trying to uh, shut people down. And, you know, when, you, when you're talking about these 501c4s, these Tea Party groups that wanted to get their tax-exempt uh, status, 
The reason why they do that is because they can't really raise any funds for their operations until they have their tax-exempt status. So what it really is is an attempt to prevent them from raising any money so that they could have their voices heard. That's what it's about. It all gets back to the money, doesn't it, David? It does. <laughs> the mother's milk of politics. Well, great discussion. We'll do it again. Uh, David, uh, we'll link to the site where people can get more information. Uh, David Ridenauer, president of National Center for Public Policy Research, doing important work uh, to inform, uh, educate the American people about what's happening on a host of issues, including this important one involving, I think, freedom. Freedom to dissent and um, the you know, mechanism here being used to uh, really enforce political action in a way that I think is um, very, very disturbing in an organization that should be nonpartisan. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, the Louisiana Coalition Against Human Trafficking, an event coming up. An activist will join us next right here on Ringside.